This is FreeCAD. In a recent video, I talked about free CAD programs you can use for your 3D printing endeavors. And in that video, I said that FreeCAD just wasn't worth learning. There was too many issues with it, too many bugs, and I wouldn't waste your time with it. And well, did that upset a lot of people. Instead, I suggested Onzel, which is built on FreeCAD, but it has additional UI improvements and cloud capability with a subscription service if you wanted to use something like that. But I'll be completely honest, I might have been too quick to dismiss FreeCAD because it's been several years since I've made a genuine effort to use FreeCAD for a project. And it turns out that the dev version is very different to the stable release that I was trying to use that is on the main website. But the question is, was I unfair to FreeCAD? So to answer this once and for all, I'm going to use FreeCAD to design an Antweight Combat Robot chassis. I'm going to take you along for the journey. We'll laugh, we'll cry, I might throw a chair across the room, but we'll find out once and for all if you should learn this or just stick with some other free alternatives out there. Let's get started. To kick things off, I need to mention something I wasn't aware of, and that's that the version that's on the FreeCAD website, the stable release, is quite a far way behind the nightly builds that are listed on GitHub. Now, you can't expect a beginner to then look through GitHub to download an unstable nightly build to get latest features. I don't think that's reasonable, so, you know, downloading the stable version is something that most people would do, but I am going to go to the weekly builds of uh, FreeCAD, and I've downloaded this version, which is 0.22 development version. It's the latest bleeding edge free CAD I could get. And I've configured it to a dark mode. And this is where the first weirdness of free CAD starts to creep in. Because here in preferences, you can change the theme. I'm not a fan of the very old fashioned original free CAD theme. I like my software to be in dark mode where possible. But if you look in the theme, there's many dark modes. We have dark. Dark Behave, Dark Contrast, Dark Modern, Darker, Pro Dark. Um, and they all have their pros and cons. Some of them work better with the UI. Some of them have text that's more visible. And I haven't found one within these themes that is perfect in every circumstance. That is one reason I liked Onzel because the UI just felt really well polished. Everything was easily visible, easy to see and read no matter what you did in the in the software. With these themes, none of them feels perfect yet. I've stuck with ProDark, but you may have other preferences. And again, this is how open source software works. I would say that like a person or a team of people have worked on each of these themes in uh, like isolation, and then they put it into the software. And that's how you end up with stuff like this. So I'm just sticking with ProDark, and this is the UI for the 0.22 development version of FreeCAD. And this is what you're greeted with once you have the ProDark theme in the latest version of FreeCAD at time of recording. And yet, you guys were correct. It is very different to the stable release. Uh, you have these different options to go straight into making a part or an assembly or a drawing. So I'm gonna click parametric part. And yeah, it does look a lot better. I can clearly see a lot of efforts being done to make the interface as user-friendly as possible. And you can see on the right-hand side here, it does guide you what to do next. So create sketch is what I want to do before I then do something with it with a feature do something to it. So I'm going to click create sketch. And then from here, I click which plane I want to put that sketch on. Now, what I also do like is I can change how I navigate through the software. At the bottom right here, you can see different navigation defaults, uh, depending on the software you might be used to. So I've actually done Tinkercad, which I quite like. So that's where you, you uh, can pan by pushing the mouse wheel down, right click to uh, orbit around the object like that and scroll in with the mouse wheel, scroll out like that. So I find it very easy to navigate around, but also on the top right here, you can select where the default view you want it. So for my sketch, I'm going to select the X, Y plane like that. And then now we're brought into our sketch workflow. And this is also something that I can see has been dramatically improved from much earlier versions of FreeCAD that I used to use. And it does feel quite similar to what I'm used to in something like Fusion. But I think Onzel again has done a little bit of a better job making it uh, more of an easy transition. But it's still very usable. So for example, you can right click and you can select what uh, geometry you want to create. So for example, polyline. So the, the actual hotkey for this is gonna be G and then M. And I actually got used to this very quickly. So you just go GM like that, or you know GL like that for a line. 
Um, and you can easily go between the different geometry just by doing that. And then when you want to dimension it, you just hit D for dimension. And it's actually something that I got quite fluent and uh, quick at doing. So I can just do GL for a line. I can snap it to this origin point here and pull it up like that. And then from here, I can do another line. I go out to here and here. Okay, hit escape to get rid of that uh, tool. So now we have several lines that are not dimensioned or constrained in any way. And constraints and dimensions are the heart of good parametric design because while you could turn this into a feature, um, you don't know what size it is and you have no real control over precision of it. So by default, FreeCAD has given the vertical and horizontal lines vertical and horizontal constraints. And that's very useful and you can easily navigate them on the right hand side here. If you wanted to, for example, delete that, you click it and delete and now that line is no longer uh, horizontally constrained, which is very cool. I do like that. But I will say that constraints can get out of hand very quickly, especially when it comes to things that are collinear. I've found um, it can actually have too many constraints by default and things that are patterned and mirrored can get very badly broken. But we'll get to that in a bit. So I can click here and with my reference, I make that 20. I can make this one 30. I can make the distance between the, that line and that point, uh, let's say 16. Something that I do like in this software and a lot of other CAD programs is you can enter a um, number and divide it or do um, simple mathematics within the, uh, the data window. So 100 divided by two is 50. The sketch goes green when it's fully defined, which is really cool. It's saying, okay, hey, I am fully defined now. You can't move it. In stuff like SolidWorks, you might go from blue to black, um, but yeah, essentially same idea. And all of this is changeable in the UI, uh, which you can make it as familiar or as different as you like. Uh, and so far, so good, right? The, the black theme is working well with the sketch. It's very easy to see. Once we start adding geometry, things get a little bit different though. But for now, this is fully defined. I'm happy with this. So I'm going to close the sketch, leave sketch. And now we have the sketch that we can do something too. So I'm going to do a pad, which might be known as an extrude in other software. And this is going to give that sketch thickness. So I'm going to make it 20 millimeters like so thick. And that works totally fine. So, so far, simple things work really well. Uh, I can go back and change this, no problem at all, and it works fine. But there is a few things that you need to be aware of that will not work in FreeCAD. For example, if I need a line as a reference, right? So for example, if I'm using this to do a mirror or something, that cannot be left as solid geometry because if I exit the sketch, it breaks. And I suggest you become familiar with seeing this report view because it will be full of red complaints before you know it. So you cannot have unused geometry. If you are going to do a sketch like this with geometry that's used for references, whether it's dimensions or constraints, you must turn it into construction geometry. It's more like old school SolidWorks. You must have a solid constrained geometry. So right click it and toggle construction geometry. Now it's dotted like it's, it's dashed like that. So when you escape, it's fixed again. This also applies to having closed off areas of the shape. For example, these two boundaries like this, you cannot do this in FreeCAD. You must have a continuous enclosed boundary with no free edges and no intersecting lines. But here's one I prepared earlier. This is the robot design that I've made in FreeCAD. And it's not too bad. You can see I've got some fillet details. I have some pattern geometry details. If I look at the bottom of the part here, you can see I've got some nice chamfers. I've got some other details. Uh, it's, it's actually not too bad. But here's the thing. Let's say you want to go back in time and change aspects of this geometry. This is where FreeCAD is not very forgiving and where other software like Onshape or Fusion 360 can be a lot more friendly. If you know what you want and you start, you go from start to finish with the very minimal changes, then fine, it doesn't really matter too much. But I have found some pretty serious bugs. Um, so for example, let's go uh, to edit the first sketch of this design. Let's say the back of this robot design is too small. And I want to extend this out by so from 22 to 30. So the back's just going to be a little bit longer. Okay. I've updated the sketch. No problem. Let's exit that sketch. 
So I haven't been served any errors, but clearly something's wrong. It hasn't actually updated. So let's step through the different features to see where it didn't work. So I'm gonna go and set the tip here. So that's our original pocket. Next one, fine. Next one, fine. So where is it breaking? Well, I've already investigated this. It actually breaks all the way down at the polar pattern. So here I've got a hole for some bolts uh, around the motor and the polar pattern turns it into four holes. So instead of doing four separate individual sketches that are, are constrained or dimensioned, I've just done one hole and patterned around the bore because that that's more efficient and it works totally fine. But it's this polar pattern that's broken. You see, it's up to date there and then it's not up to date here. And if I go ahead and recompute the, the pattern, doesn't change. I have to go into the pattern and edit it and then I have to just mess around for a while. So uh, remove feature, click pocket, add feature, uh, add a new reference to that hole, uh, but that's not right. Let's try again. Um, add the pocket, select a new um, reference. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I'll be honest guys, I'm not sure what I was just doing there. I was just trying to click it and redefine it and uh it seems to have fixed it <laughs> uh but yeah that's just one thing that might not rebuild and if you're brave enough to go back in time to change geometry somewhat substantially make maybe add a new feature in that's where it just seems to be really unstable so for example i want to go back to before the fillets and chamfer um but just after the polar pattern and i want to add a cutout for the motor because I, I forgot that so I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna add, create sketch, and then add a cutout. So what I wanna do is reference the existing geometry, and you can do that. Uh, you can't do it in a solid line way, but you can reference it as like construction geometry. You do it through create external geometry like this. And I'm gonna select that line there. And then I'm gonna to do a, let's try just a rectangular cutout, which will cut into the shape like that. Escape that, and now this is where things get a bit iffy. I'm going to do a uh, cut, a pocket. So I'm going to do it up to face, make sure it's all the way up to that face. Say okay. And yeah, I'm not sure why the fillet breaks. Um, there was no fillet there in that area. But yeah, so in these cases, it will break cascading geometry that's not even remotely related to what you just changed. Uh, I don't know the reasoning for it, but it really does limit your ability to go back and alter your design without having to substantially rebuild certain aspects of it. Now, as I said, I've got a lot of experience with CAD work in terms of how to set up files and make things work properly parametrically. I really struggled to get this file to work and in the end <laughs> broke it, but I fired up Onshape after not using it for years and did the same design and had it printing within an hour. And if I change something in Onshape, it says, hey, this reference lot is lost. Do you want to update it or delete it? If I change a plane, it'll try to fix it. Obviously, you can blow up things in Onshape just as much as you can blow them up in, in Fusion or SolidWorks or FreeCAD, and they just don't work. But it's a lot more resilient and a lot more friendly to newcomers. For example, you can have stray geometry and it will still work. You just tell it what boundary you, you want to use. It's not as restrictive as FreeCAD. And there was various scenarios in FreeCAD where I was genuinely stumped. For example, I would do a pocket and it would complain an error out. But that's because the pocket was facing the wrong way. By default, I had to mirror, I had to uh, flip the direction and make it actually cut into the object. But it's not really clear that that's what's happening. It just says, oh, pocket won't work. And you have to sort of infer, oh, that's why it's not working, not there's something wrong with my sketch. It's stuff like that that I just really think could put someone off learning 3D modeling, and I really don't want to see that. In my previous video talking about free CAD programs, I recommended Onzel ES over FreeCAD itself, even though it's built on it, because I said the user interface was so much more polished, and even after using the dev version with the dark themes, I still stand by that recommendation. There's just a few quirks in here that don't exist in the Onzel version, and it's just got that more professional polish that should help beginners get past 
those really steep learning curves, let's be real, when it comes to parametric modeling. And just again, a quick example, for example, with this part in FreeCAD, with the dark theme, if I want to draw on the bottom of my model, look what happens when I face the model directly to the camera. The light source is making it go white. And let's say I do a sketch on here. Well, where's my sketch? Y you can't see it. Because <laughs> the light source is making it too reflective. Uh, I changed that myself. I went to preferences, light source. I made it like a light green color. And I changed the intensity. And I applied that. And then look, okay, now I can see it. But that is something I had to know to change. Whereas you go to on Onzol, and then you want to draw a sketch on the bottom of the, the part, for example, like this, same thing. It's got this grid, which I'm not a fan of, but you can see the sketch, right? It's, it's much more polished and a lot more friendly to a newcomer. So I still stand by what I said. I'm really, really impressed with the difference between the staple release free CAD and the dev version. I think there's a huge difference and I hope that the, the dev version is, is made stable very soon. But I just think the Onzol version is just that step above being more polished. But again, even with that, I personally prefer Onshape for free 3D modeling. Yes, it might disappear at any time. So don't expect your CAD files to last forever, but it is so much uh, more streamlined. It is so much easier to use for a newcomer and much more forgiving if you want to go back in time and mess with your models, sketches, features, dimensions, and that sort of thing, and have an update without it just blowing up. And I totally get the argument that like with FreeCAD, it's yours on your computer, no cloud connectivity, the world could go dark, and you could still use FreeCAD. But I'll be honest, if the time comes where that does happen, I'd probably just be getting on a pirate ship. So yeah, anyway. Thanks for watching guys. Hope this video made sense. I do understand people's passion for FreeCAD. By all means, keep using it. Keep making tutorials. It's come a long way, but I still stand by what I said in my previous video, and I do highly recommend many other CAD programs that are worth checking out for newcomers to 3D modeling, especially when it comes to 3D printing. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing and watching some of my other videos like these ones, where I go through my top CAD tips with Fusion, but it is transferable to many other programs. And I'll catch you again very shortly. Bye, guys.